Yo, what up, Toshi here. So we have the sparkled character introduction that we're going to be doing in today's video. I originally was not planning to do this, but I'm going to be honest, I need more time to work on the video I'm currently working on. So I want to get this out instead of having this delayed later on, because obviously I want to talk about the character more before she does arrive. Um, They are going to show her light cone and stuff like that, but they haven't shown it yet. I need to like click on this so we can actually have something to look at instead of there being nothing on the screen. There is going to be the light cone reveal tomorrow at the time of recording so look forward to that her light cone is i hit my mic her light cone is very very good for anyone that wants to get more crit stats on said damage you in the same team with sparkle maybe you're struggling with create create damage whatever the case may be or maybe you want some other characters in your teaming comp like ushuan for instance to have a more dps oriented build and then that's where her light cone shines in my honest opinion but aside from that you don't need it because this character gives you tons of stats already that's one of the best things about Sparkle. No matter what damage dealer you are using in your account, they're going to benefit from this character's arrival. So I find this very interesting, but in the ability showcase for Sparkle, they're using the elemental skill on Black Swan, who is a character you don't want to build with any crit, just like Kafka. I don't know why they chose Black Swan of any... They could have chose Jing, Daniel, a quantum character, but they chose Black Swan. I don't know. But anyways, her elemental skill pushes up the action forward of the character, and it gives them a ton of crit damage based on the percentage of Sparkle's crit damage. Think of this as Bronya's ultimate, but on an elemental skill. It's very, very, very strong. And as I said before, since Sparkle is a character that works with virtually any damage deal in the game, you're going to benefit from this character's elemental skill because it lasts until the start of your next turn. Which means if you have a character with follow-up attacks, their follow-up or backload of damage will benefit from the crit buff she gives making her a very nice pairing with, like I said, any damage dealer. Her ultimate is very, very, very nice. The animation is very good. It reminds me a lot of the Fu Xuan animation just because of how crisp and clean it looks, but she gives a ton of skill points to the team. So what I do like about Sparkle that is not covered in her ability showcase is that she gives an increased max amount of skill points to the team, which means on top of these skill points she's already giving her for ultimate, you're going to have a lot more to work with, which means in dual DPS team, she's really good. In teams where you have skill point hungry damage dealer, she's really good. In teams where you want all of your characters to spam their skill, like Fu Xuan constantly spamming her skill to give more energy to herself and to allow the team to have more CC blockage, she's going to excel in those teams. So I remember in a video I made a while back over Sparkle, I did mention that Jing Lu was a character that was not going to benefit from Sparkle as much as other characters. And the reason why I mentioned that is because Jing Lu doesn't use as many skill points, which Sparkle... Her best selling point is the amount of skill points she gives because that means she's a lot more flexible versus a character like Bronya. And she's not as hungry as Bronya. So your damage dealer has more damage uptime and has more skill points to work with. But with that being said, the thing is how Sparkle works as a character is no matter who is using skill points in the team, as long as someone in the team is using skill points, you're able to generate buffs to the whole team, which means all those damage buffs she gives, that is for every other element other than Quantum, of course is going to count for every damage dealer or every character in the team. So if Jing Lu's not the one using skill points, but another character is like Bronya, for instance, so you want to use Bronya and Sparkle on the same team alongside Jing Lu for hyper carry teams, you can do so because Bronya is going to be using the elemental skill, taking away skill points and giving the buffs from Sparkle's passive on top of the crit damage and the action four that Sparkle already gives, which means an additional turn for Jing Lu, more uptime on her Syzygy, I always say that incorrect Syzygy, uh, maybe I'm saying it right, I don't know, stacks, and she's able to keep uptime on her damage. So it's very important to take it to consideration as well. And that's not even considering a character like Huo Huo is now able to spam her skill or use her skill whenever she needs to use it so it remains skill point neutral instead of trying to maintain a skill point positive play style. And that's because you have a character in team party giving skill points, which means this character doesn't really care about taking away skill points from the team. And another thing to note is that since Wohu already gives energy to the team. Maybe you have more uptime on Sparkle's ultimate in the course of the battle. So that's another thing to take into consideration as well. Now, the truth is, there's some characters in the game that want to use Bronya more than other characters. That's because Bronya gives a 100% action forward, which means if you're someone that doesn't like speed tuning your characters or you're not lucky with the speed substat, you'll probably find your best interest to just continue using Bronya with some of your teams, like Argenti, for instance, who you want to build on as much attack as possible. So giving this character attack percentage boots and Bronya giving 100% action forward means that this character is going to have a lot more synergy 
with the light cone that gives a further damage boost depending on the ally that goes after the said buffer. And again, since he has attack boots, he's not going to have much action forward into the turn order. So when he gets that 100% action forward, he's going to benefit it from it immensely. Some of you say I'm biased and that I only like talking about Monoquan, but the truth is, it's just a team comp I find the most fun. And it's a team comp that's going to benefit from the release of Sparkle too. But as I said before, every team or every character in the game is going to benefit from Sparkle. It doesn't matter if you're Quantum or not. It's just that Quantum is going to take advantage of those further buffs she gives based on the respect of Quantum members in the team comp. That's all I was trying to say, really. And depending on what video you watched from when I was talking about Sparkle, maybe things have changed with the character. Maybe the character now doesn't give as much damage buffs as she did previously, and instead gives a ton of attack instead, which means that characters like Fu Xuan won't be able to have more DPS than she was going to have previously with a older version of Sparkle. So does the release of Sparkle mean that characters like Ruan Mei is going to be phased out for hyper carry? I think so, yeah, because Ruan Mei is a character that buffs multiple damage dealers on the team, but Sparkle also does as well. But the thing is, Ruan Mei gives stronger buffs for multiple damage dealers, but not stronger buffs for a soul damage dealer, which means in dual DPS and teams like, for instance, dot teams, because Ruan Mei does give break effect and break effect efficiency, you're going to find this character much more valuable in those teams, which isn't a bad thing because having more variety of characters to have better synergy with said teams versus having synergy with every single team and better than every other character in the game is a lot more healthier for the longevity of the game and that's just my opinion and the truth of the matter is that bronya isn't going to be phased out because of the release of sparkle because most people are just going to use the two characters in the same team for their hyper carry teams because you're going to get the most damage output in the most turns you can give to your damage dealer which for many players I like to min-max their hyper-carry teams, that's really the best way of doing so. So I would say the biggest loser after the release of Sparkle is going to be Ting Yun, and that's because, well, Ting Yun gives energy, which is very nice for damage dealers. But if you're getting an additional turn, you're able to generate energy, and you're able to deal more damage, and Sparkle gives further damage bumps way stronger than Ting Yun's, which means your damage dealer is going to deal even more damage, even if they have less uptime of their ultimates. The only character that may not stand true for is Daniel, but it depends on the amount of investment you have on this character and the amount of Eidolons you have on him as well. Yukong is very strong too, but that's only an Eidolon 6. So there you have it. This is going to be the last video on Sparkle until she does hit live servers. So that being said, I can't wait for the release of this character. All I will say though about Sparkle as a character for the you know longevity of the game they're buffing hyper carry when hyper carry was already still overperforming other versus other teams the other teams were got, gotten better but this doesn't do the game favors in terms of variety for adding in like in my opinion adding another character to make hyper carry even stronger when it already was the leading performing team in terms of metrics across the board that doesn't really do it any favors now i will say sparkle is the biggest benefit to not only monoclon but characters that have backloaded damage that weren't able to use a Free idol on six Bronya, so therefore she is healthy in that regard. But again, hyper carry is just already strong. She's just gonna be even stronger now. She's already a really strong character without even looking at her being good for characters that have backload damage because her bumps are better than Bronya's, which is crazy, right? Thank you for watching and have a nice rest of your day. Peace.